Okay, tonight we are going to read, I shouldn't say tonight because you could be watching this anytime, but today, <laughs> in this segment, we are reading chapter seven, The Gifts of the Kingdom, and this is section three, The Reality of the Kingdom. And we're reading from A Course in Miracles, which is a scribed writing coming through Helen Shookman, the scribe. And uh, maybe it's some, maybe in this video we'll talk a little bit about that at the end. Okay, but let's read let's read this segment: the reality of the kingdom. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit teaches one lesson and applies it to all individuals in all situations. Being conflict free, he maximizes all efforts and all results by teaching the power of the kingdom of God Himself. He teaches you, you that all power is yours. Its application does not matter. It is always maximal. Your vigilance does not establish it as yours, but it does enable you to use it always and in all ways. When I said, quote, I am with you always, unquote, I meant it literally. I am not absent to anyone in any situation. Because I am always with you, you are the way, the truth, and the life. You did not make this power any more than I did. It was created to be shared and therefore cannot be meaningfully perceived as belonging to anyone at the expense of another. Such a perception makes it meaningless by eliminating or overlooking its real and only meaning. God's meaning waits in the kingdom because that is where he placed it. It does not wait in time. It merely rests in the kingdom because it belongs there as you do. How can you who are God's meaning, perceive yourself as absent from it. You can see yourself as separated from your meaning only by experiencing yourself as unreal. This is why the ego is insane. It teaches you that you are not what you are. <clears throat> that is so contradictory, it is clearly impossible. It is therefore a lesson you cannot really learn and therefore cannot really teach. Yet you are always teaching. You must therefore be teaching something else, even though the ego does not know what it is. The ego then is always being undone and does not suspect your motives. Your mind cannot be unified in allegiance to the ego because the mind does not belong to it. Yet what is, quote, treacherous, unquote, to the ego is faithful to peace. The ego's, quote, enemy, unquote, is therefore your friend. I said before that the ego's friend is not part of you because the ego perceives itself at war and therefore in need of allies. You who are not at war must look for brothers and recognize all whom you see as brothers because only equals are at peace. Because, because God's equal sons have everything, they cannot compete. Yet if they perceive any of their brothers as anything other than their perfect equals, the idea of competition has entered their minds. Do not underestimate your need to be vigilant against this idea because all your conflicts come from it. It is the belief that conflicting interests are possible and therefore you have accepted the impossible as true. Is that different from saying you perceive yourself as unreal? To be in the kingdom is merely to focus your full attention on it. As long as you believe you can attend to what is not true, you are accepting conflict as your choice. Is it really a choice? It seems to be, but seeming and reality are hardly the same. You who are the kingdom are not concerned with seeming. Reality is yours because you are reality. This is how having and being are ultimately reconciled, not in the kingdom, but in your mind. The altar there is the only reality. The altar is perfectly clear in thought because it is a reflection of perfect thought. Your right mind sees only brothers because it sees only in its own light. God has lit your mind himself and keeps your mind lit by his light because his light is what your mind is. This is totally beyond question. And when, your question, when you question it, you are answered. The answer, answer merely undoes the question by establishing the fact that to question reality is to question meaninglessly. That is why the Holy Spirit never questions. His sole function is to undo the questionable and thus lead to certainty. The certain 
are perfectly calm because they are not in doubt. They do not raise questions because nothing questionable enters their minds. This holds them in perfect serenity because this is what they share, knowing what they are. <laughs> it sounds to the to the uninitiated this sounds like gobbledygook i know it it it, it sounds like what is really going on here now but keep in mind that first of all this is a self study course okay which means that you study it by your by yourself <laughs> So what we're doing here with me reading this to you is not, is good. It's helpful, I'm sure, on some, some level. Um, but really, it, it all comes down to you, it, it, your own reading. Because like, when you read it on the page, it's different than when someone reads it to you. And part of that is because um, there are things that are capitalized. There are things that are italicized there are things that are emphasized that might not completely come across unless you actually read it and there's a value to reading you know jesus obviously is presenting this in a readable form it's not necessarily to be read out loud although obviously it can be but um there is something to reading, to reading the words on the page and um, letting it hit you where it hits you and, and, you know, understanding it for what you get from it in any given moment. But that said, there, there, I, I do see the value in someone else giving their thoughts on on it because it it does help it acts as a kind of a reality check maybe and a mirror for you in your own process so let's talk about this i mean the cor the course and i will keep saying this the course is very simple you know it all comes if you if you had to put it in in the most simple terms it's just two words god is end of story God is. Um, but then you could say, you know, if God is doesn't make complete sense, and, it, and I don't think it would to most people, you could say God is love. And in love, there's no judgment. There's not even the need for forgiveness. There's not, there's not even the thought of judgment. <laughs> there's not, there's not even, um, you know, there's no need for for anything except love itself, and Jesus is is coming to remind us that that we are that that is our reality that is our only reality, and to make anything else our reality is a mistake. It's not a it's not a sin, but it is it is a mistake that can be corrected, and he's. He wants to help us to correct the mistaken beliefs and ideas that we have been conditioned to believe about things. Um, in this, he is uh, in this section. He, you know, it's more the whole course is just, uh, you know, a it's like footnotes to that one to God is and. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. And God is. Um, <clears throat> so let's go to um, when Jesus says at the beginning, when I said I am, always, I am with you always, and I believe that is from the Gospel of John. Um, I meant it literally. Jesus is always with us. He is, we are Jesus. Jesus is, is within all of us. Jesus is, is part of our, just as the Holy Spirit is. And Jesus is one with the Holy Spirit. He, he makes that point a number of times in the course that he, he became one with the Holy Spirit by doing what he is 
teaching us to do or or offering to us to learn he wants us to learn what he did to become one with the holy spirit and ultimately know god again um so he says i am with you always i am not absent to anyone in any situation because i am always with you you are the way the truth and the light in other words jesus is our equal if he is any different at this moment it's only in time and time is illusionary he says that time is time you know he's only maybe a little bit ahead of us in this um in this whole journey so to speak uh or process of awakening but he is our equal and he also makes the point that he did not create the power of god any more that you know we did not create it. He did not create it. God is the author. Now, what that means... Now, I, I want to point out that I've been harping on this non-duality thing. Um, is the Course pointing to a non-dual reality? Now, I would say... Some people would would say that, that is, that's just a concept. You know, non-duality is a concept. And it's, you could say it's a false dichotomy to say it's either this or that. Maybe it's everything, you know, you know, maybe, maybe there is a, a creator in a sense that we, you know, that, that we return to, but it is, we are that as well. You know, maybe the, maybe it's both. In other words, you know, who's to say, um, I, I I I would not pretend to say, you know, but but my sense is Jesus, everything that Jesus is doing here is to help us on this side of the veil. He is here to help us to release the judgment and learn the way of true forgiveness, which means to ultimately true forgiveness is seeing the equality of everyone, that we are all equal you know, so to speak, in the, in the eyes of God, if God has eyes, but God, you know, God does not really have eyes, but um, maybe God does, you know, <laughs> again, um, but in the, in the eyes of God, we are all equals, and so Jesus is here to um, help us to recognize where we are in competition with our brothers, so to speak, where we are, um, uh you know not seeing them as our equals and and it's we 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 vacillate between uh and freud talked about this you know the superiority complex and the inferiority complex we vacillate we waver back and forth between the two we're either we either feel inferior or we feel superior and we hardly ever feel equal some you know it's easy to feel equal to to those who are, who we, who we deem are equals. It's, it's far less easy to do it with just about everyone else <laughs> who we don't think are, are equals. Um, but Jesus is saying that, that if you understand this idea that our own, only reality is, is the love of God, um, that's what that's what he's saying that we see the equality in that regard that we are all that together and if we if we see our brother as anything less than that or a sister you know or or the rock or the tree or the animal or anything if we see anything as less than the perfect love of God we we have made we have sided with the ego and we've made a mistake and it's that mistake is clouding our mind and that is preventing us from from knowing what we really are and that's that's all the only thing we really want you know and the, the other way to put this which you hear a lot is is that everyone wants love Every, everybody's looking for love and 
this is what this is saying. You know, everyone wants to return home and, and know what they really are. <clears throat> so, um, Jesus points out that the ego is always being undone. It has to be undone because, because our, of what our reality is. Um, um, let's see if is there anything else. You know, so be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. Um, to be in the kingdom is merely to focus your full attention on it. So Jesus is also making the point, you know, be vigilant only for God and his kingdom means focus your full attention on that. If you want to know God again, you have to, you have to give it your full attention. It's like anything, you know, you have to, whatever you want, you must give it your full attention. And as, as, as soon as your attention is divided and as soon, as soon as you slip into doubt and uncertainty, you are, um, you know, you're, you, you're outside. <laughs> but once you're in complete, in that complete state of no question, then you are, you are in the kingdom. Um, most of us, you know, we, it's very difficult not to have doubt. And, and all of us are, you know, if we really look deep inside, we have many, many questions <laughs> and we are in doubt about all of this stuff. Now, is there a way, what is the way to get to a place of complete certainty? And, and Jesus, like, as he said in the, in the last section, you have to be, you have to give it your full attention and you have to be, you have to learn to be consistent. And that's the only way to, to do this. And as you become more and more consistent, um, you will see the results and you will become even more consistent until the point where you find yourself back in the kingdom once again. Um, anyway, the, you know, again, we could we could go line by line through this. We don't really have the time. And that's why this is all a, a your own personal journey, ultimately. I hope what I have shared uh, in this little segment has been helpful to you. And uh, I, I really appreciate your taking the time to, to listen and appreciate. And I would love your comments and feedback. Thank you so much. And see you next time. Next time, we're going to be reading section four, Healing as the Recognition of Truth.